jump out of the picture and we don't want it. It should be in the background this, so just reduce it down like that. Uh, just get a little bit of light on that tree. And we can do the same down this side, but this is in the foreground, so I can add much more yellow. And I can actually I can make that quite strong if we wanted. A little bit of punchy stuff there. It would be easy to put the punchy colour right there in the uh, focus. But if you did that, it would look a little bit obvious. You know, it's a little bit of a, uh, an easy trick to play. This is more subtle. You're just carrying your eye around the picture rather than bashing it straight into the focus. Finally, we'll just take this small brush I've got here and just put a few final touches around her. You can see she's starting to dry now and I don't want her to. So we just give that a little spray and that means I can play around with this area if I want. The first thing I'm going to do is just put a bit of warm light by mixing the white into these warm colours. Got the raw sienna and the burnt sienna there. And just put a little bit of warm light on this back wall here like that. Maybe a little bit just down on here. And I'll look for other areas where I can see that warm light like that. Uh, around the lady, well quite honestly I don't think I'm going to do much more to her. I might just use a bit of the road to push back in here like this. Just push into her leg there, just so it doesn't look, she doesn't look too um, bulky. Compositionally, we might want to strengthen one or two of these darks to pull them slightly further back. So in that case, really, we have to be a little bit careful here not to suddenly make a, a strong statement which isn't necessary. As I was saying before, it's much better to stay subtle. So I'm mixing in the ultramarine and the burnt umber here. Now that is a terrifically dark dark, it's almost black. So use it sparingly. I would just put a little bit down like that. You, you, it does create more depth, but at the same time you want to be very, very careful how much of that sort of thing you use. And quite a good thing to do is spray the picture underneath so that it is blending. You see you can blend those like that and I'm going to put more burnt umber than ultramarine blue. I want it to stay warm. Take off some of the paint off the brush. I'll do that onto my rag here so that in fact I'm not laying it on quite so heavy like that and just make it more subtle by uh, running it into the paint underneath which is a little bit wet because I've just sprayed it. So it's a little bit like working with oil. Well, a lot like working with oil, I should say. And then we just creates a bit more depth with that extra little bit of power. Do a little bit on this side here. And of course, if I didn't like any of this, if I thought I'd overstated it and made it a little bit too strong for the composition, then I can blend in because we're working with these paints that will keep blending if you want. Now, finally, we can see that these shadows now, now that I've strengthened these darks, compositionally, these shadows feel weak. So just simply get a little bit more of the burnt sienna and cobalt blue and just test a little bit first. That's probably a bit better. Put some of those blues in here. It's all about carrying your eye around the picture. So those blues go there. This goes down there. So that one there already looks a little bit too dark. So just take a little bit of light blue and just soften that back down again like that. So there we are. Composition without detail. The picture's done. That's it for this painting. Remember, when you're composing a picture, keep it simple. Focus and framework. You're painting your feelings and you want to know what that focus refers to. Don't choose more than one focus. If you want to keep it down to one, it'll be much, much easier. On the next programme, we'll be looking at drawing, proportions and perspective. Look forward to seeing you then.